Hello guys, real quick before the video begins, I would just like to thank all my subscribers. Thank you very much for 3.5k subs. I am absolutely speechless with all the support I've been receiving. You guys are the absolute best. Without you guys, I do not know where my channel would be. So once more, thank you all very much. Now, I'm not gonna waste too much of your time, so let's just jump straight into the video. So the first commonly asked question that I get is, how do I get into solo runs? So depending on the floor that you want, you will need either two or four people in your party to start the dungeon run. In my case, I need two people to start. So I have two instances of Minecraft open, one of which is my main, the other is my alt. My alt is always in limbo to ensure that it doesn't get warped into skyblock. And I just start a dungeon and that's how you start a dungeon run alone. Okay, moving on. The next question, why do I do solo runs? Okay, so why do I do solo runs? Because it is a great way to practice and refine my secret routes, and it helps me push myself to be a better and faster version of myself. I love solo runs a lot because you can learn a lot of stuff from doing solo runs that you can't learn from doing normal runs. I mean, it's not that you can't learn it, but you, some, some things you learn much faster doing it solo. Also, when you do solo runs, you learn how to play smarter and safer, because if you die, the run is over. You don't have teammates to revive you and you learn not to blame your teammates because of poor performance because you don't have any teammates. You only have yourself to blame for anything that happens during a solo run. If you have the time and nothing better to do, I highly recommend you guys do solo runs to practice and refine your skills, your individual skill. Gear is important and it, but it doesn't make the player. Pure individual skill can and will outshine simple things like cata level or gear. And also it doesn't have to be exclusively floor 5 or 6. You can do solo runs on any floor that you wish to. Whether that be floor 1, floor 2, 3, 4, maybe even 5 or 6, it doesn't matter. As long as you're doing solo runs, it doesn't matter what floor you do them on. Though if you could do the highest floor that you can without it having any, any significant issues. If you can do floor 5 solo, do floor 5 solo. If you can't, go down to floor 4. If you can't do floor 4, go back to floor 3, and so on. With enough practice and repetition, solo runs will definitely help you out a lot in the long run. You will be able to learn a lot of skills exclusive to solo runs. Not only that, if you haven't learned all the skills or you want to optimize your routes even further, solo runs are the best way to go at it. I mean, you're the only person in the dungeon. You don't have to worry about slowing the run down for your teammates. You can take all the time you need to look at the layout, go to Dungeon Secret Guide if needed, and think about how you can further optimize your route to save more time. All of this will help you out a lot when you're doing regular runs. Now that was my advice to everyone who wishes to improve their individual skill. If you want to improve and get better at the game, you need to spend the time, you need to go the extra mile to practice. Now you don't have to do solo runs and you can still get better, but solo runs are just great for practice in general. Now, of course, it doesn't mean that you must do solo runs to get better at the game. No, that's not what I'm implying. Please do not think that that's the case. If you're not doing solo runs, regular runs can also help you to improve your skill, but it isn't as fast as you won't improve as fast as you would doing solo runs. That's what I'm basically implying. You can most definitely improve without having ever done any solo run in your life. Don't worry about it. Solo runs are a great way to practice, but it's not a must. So, the one downside I can see to solo runs is that you won't be able to learn how proper team coordination, you won't be able to learn how to learn proper teamwork, and map awareness. Now, why would I say map awareness? When you're doing solo runs, the only you don't really look at the map that much. You only look at it to see where you need to be next. When you do when you're in a team run, a regular run, that is entirely that is an entirely different case. You need to be aware of your map, your surroundings at all any given time. Because you need to know exactly where you should be, where you need to be, what you should be doing to maximize efficiency when you're doing regular runs. So that's the one downside you're doing solo runs is that you won't be able to learn any of these crucial skill. Okay, now enough talk of the solo runs. Next frequently asked question. Should I go mage or berserk? Okay, for the most part, mage. If you are a kata 30 plus player, most definitely mage. But for those people that are under catacombs 30, a lot of things come into factor, but if you are prioritizing damage over survivability, then definitely mage. 
Berserks are only good if you need survivability because of the Berserk passive, Bloodlust. Mages and Archers out-damage Berserks and healers or tanks are more useful than Berserks in Floor 7 because they have their own roles to play in the boss fight. As for Floor 6 however, there's a couple of variables and a couple of factors that you need to think about when you're talking about Berserks versus healers, tanks, archers or mages. For Berserk versus Mage, Mage deals more damage than Berserk in the, in the Floor 6 boss fight, but Berserks can survive better unless you're a left click Mage, but left click Mage's lifesteal is kind of inconsistent at times. And Archer versus Berserk, not a question, Archer for Floor 6. As for Tank versus Berserk, Berserks are somewhat more useful than Tanks in Floor 6. As for Healer versus Berserk, it's actually dependent on your Catacombs level and your team. If your team can survive without a healer consistently, without having any issues at all, definitely Berserk over Healer. If your team are, is having issues surviving the Floor 6 Terracotta phase, then healers are definitely good. Okay, next question. What gear is the best for X class for Floor Y? Okay, um, f as for what gear is the best, I mean, it actually depends. I might actually do an entire, make an entire different guide about what gear you should get for each different floor, for different cata levels. Um, I'm not really sure if I should do make one, but I'm pretty sure a lot of people will like it. So I'll think about making a guide on that soon. Just stay tuned. No promises though. Okay, next question. Do you do carries? Uh, no, I don't. I don't do carries. Next question. Uh, how do you make your money? I made most if not all of my money from do from dungeons. I've been doing dungeons since the day released and if I were to make a rough estimate of how much I've made from dungeons, I would say two and a half bills sounds about right. Maybe maybe overestimating it or maybe I mean or I could even be underestimating the amount I've made, but I've made most of my money from dungeons. Alright, the next question is what were your early days of dungeons like and what gear did you run? Ah, my early days of dungeons. This brings back a lot of memories. Now, before dungeons came out, I invested in white dragon armor, a level 100 legendary sheep, and a pigment sword. That was what I had prepared for dungeons for when it came out. I decided to run mage because back when it was in alpha, when I, I tested out mage and alpha, it was really, really overpowered. Pigment sword pre-nerf, which shred through the trash mobs, mini bosses, and even the professor. So... I noticed I was really overpowered, so I invested in mage gear and mage setup to run when dungeons came out. And I'm so glad that I did, because pigment sword went from 8 mil upwards to a whopping 20 to 30 mil. Frozen scythe went from some from 5 mil or so up to 30 mil. They were really that expensive at one point. Now I used to run pigment sword for everything, it was my go-to weapon. I used it for room clear before I got my frozen scythe and I used it for mini bosses and a professor fight. Of course frozen scythe is better at room clear than the pigment sword but back then I, had, I was kind of poor. I wasn't able to afford a frozen scythe. After I got my frozen scythe however, I became really good. I used frozen scythe for my room clear, I used pigment sword for mini bosses. Now after a couple days of grinding dungeons, my team slowly got their adaptive armor which at that time was considered to be the best set for dungeons. We even took a screenshot, and I'll be showing you the screenshot right now on screen. We all got to Catacombs 20 with Floor 3, and we quit one week prior to Floor 4's release date because we thought we were ready for Floor 4. We had about 500 runs or so, and we thought we were ready. Well, guess what? <laughs> we were so wrong. When Floor 4 came out, we got, our at we got beat so hard, we it took us 40 minutes for a failed run. So, because of that small incident, I dedicated myself to grinding so I won't have to worry about Floor 5, about history repeating itself when Floor 5 does come out. I was one of the few people that got Catacombs 30 with Floor 4 without any XP runs. I have done over 2500 Floor 4 runs to hit Catacombs 30 with Floor 4. Now, <laughs> I think I went a bit too far with the last segment. I'm having a bit too much fun. <laughs> okay, um, well... I guess that concludes this frequently asked questions, this FAQ. And if you have any more questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section down below. I'll get to them. I read all comments. And my next video will most probably be a guide on all five classes. 
but I might separate them into five separate videos because each class I'll probably take a bit more time to elaborate on. So yeah, I might probably take five videos for all that. I'll probably start off with mage class since it is the easiest class to talk about, me being a, ma a mage initially, and it is the most ran class. So I'll talk about mages first. Then I'll talk about archers and I'll think about what I should talk about next. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope to see you guys again. Peace out.